So what's our approach? Since we now have this non-linear dependency of our baseband impulse response uh, from the matrix coefficients, we need to use some more powerful optimization algorithms which are made for just mostly uh, convex error functions. We first will define an error function and then we will use an optimization algorithm to minimize this error function. This error function can be the sum of the magnitudes or the sum of the squares of the magnitudes of the differences between our obtained frequency response given our unknown variables at some point and our desired frequency response. To give the stop band attenuation and the pass band ripples different weights, we can also assign weights to the different frequency regions for our error function. So our starting point is a vector of all our unknowns of our matrices. Well, this vector is called x. And now we define a function in which computes the baseband impulse response out of these unknowns by multiplying our matrices to obtain our final folding matrix or the polyphase matrix, and then we read out the baseband impulse response. So this then yields to a baseband prototype for our coefficient set x, which we will call hx of n. And this is now used to compute a weighted frequency response at k frequency points with weights w, y for each frequency point. So, this is given here. And you can see more at this paper from the um, IEEE uh, transactions of signal on signal processing. New framework for modulated perfect reconstruction filter banks by Professor Schuller and Smith. For instance, we can use FRAC-C to compute HI. Uh, by default, it computes 412 equally spaced frequency points. And then we multiply this h of i with the weights w of i. And we choose as many frequency points as necessary to sufficiently cover our frequency response. Usually it should be several times the length of our filter to avoid sampling the frequency response accidentally near its zeros. So the more important frequency points in terms of attenuation, they will get higher weights. The same can be also done for the synthesis, but remember that this is only necessary if we don't have the determinant equals to minus one, because when we have the determinant equals to minus one, we obtain identical prototype impulse responses for both the analysis and the synthesis. So we only need to optimize the analysis. So we can see this, uh, we've seen this on lectures 13 and lectures 14. We also need to have a vector containing the weighted desired frequency response, which would be uh, one for the pass band multiplied by the corresponding weights and zeros in the stop band. And we will call this D uh, for desired. So when we have all of these, our error function of our vector of unknown x will be, for example, this equation here. And we have a row times column vector now we just need to minimize this function f of x with respect to our vector of unknowns x. And this leads us to an optimization problem in general. The goal of optimization is to find the vector x which minimizes the error function f of x.